For over a hundred years, the telephone remained firmly wired to the ground. In the 80s, those who could afford it became more and more mobile, first with the cordless phone and then with the cellular phone. But now the Department of Trade and Industry has set up an initiative that could eventually lead to the replacement of the fixed wire telephones altogether. Later this month, they're expected to announce three new licenses to run personal communications networks. These are to be based on the idea of a personal communicator, a portable phone for everyone. Smaller than the smallest existing cellular phone, yet with the same capabilities, but as cheap to buy and to use as telepoint phones, the newly launched mobile pay phones that we showed you recently. The idea eventually is once you'd been allocated a telephone number, you'd keep it as your personal number for the rest of your life and carry your phone with you everywhere. These are the prototype models, though they're unlikely to be available for at least four years. But the seven consortia bidding for licenses have come up with a range of features, from the waterproof sport phone to the smart card phone, where, for instance, parents can control their children's calls with a card programmed to allow the child to call home and one or two other numbers only. The possibilities are endless. Yes, even an inbuilt television screen could eventually be feasible. But these sorts of advanced services will be expensive. And initially, the emphasis will be on providing a basic portable service at a low cost. And the key to this lies not in the handsets, but in the network structure. The principle will be the same as existing cellular systems in which each cell has a transmitter receiver that links users with the national network. But these cells have a limited capacity for the number of callers they can deal with at once. So the new systems will use larger numbers of smaller cells, which will give far greater total network capacity. That also means handsets can be smaller and less powerful. The disadvantage is that the large number of cells will need massive initial investment. The government hopes that the new licenses will attract this investment, create competition and force the pace of change, so retaining Britain's world lead in mobile communications.